Hi, we're in part two of a tutorial in ASP.NET to create a grid of buttons. As you can see, you can click each button and change its state. So, if you haven't seen part one, check it out. Otherwise, we're going to part two. So where we left off in part one, we had a buttons page with two images on it with customized buttons. Now we're going to add some ability to show the state either on or off. In order to show the state, we're going to go into the controller for our buttons. And we're going to add a new variable here. So what I want to do is create a new list. And each item in the list is from the button model. As you can see, I must import this. So now I have a using statement for the models. So I must initialize the list, so I will create a new list of type button, and it is empty. So now it's time to populate the list. So buttons.add is the function that I'm looking for. And inside the add, I will create a brand new button and set it to a true state. The next one will have a false state, and let's create a third one, or even a fourth one if you like, and we'll change these to true or false in a random order. Now down in the section where it says return a view, I need two parameters. First of all, I will specifically state that I'm going to be using the index view, and then the second parameter is the variables or the model that will be used on this page. Let's go check out the index page now in the button controller. So it says at the first line that it's expecting to have one button as its state. Well, the model needs to be updated. So let's say we have now changed this to expect a list of buttons. And so the button model is now a list. So now I would like to conditionally display a button. So let's use the at if syntax and we'll check to see if the first button in the list is state is true. We'll do something, otherwise we'll do something else. So the brackets need to be uh, configured this way. Next, I'm going to move the image tag. So let's cut out this one. So control X, put it in the first section. And the other, the off picture, let's put in the alternative. So this will say uh, green for on or off for red, and it will be conditional on the first item in the list. So since we have three items in our list, I'm going to copy and paste and use model one and model two. So we should see three pictures on the screen based on the uh, state of those three buttons. And so when I run the program, you can see that I have three buttons on the screen. True, false, true is the value of the three buttons. So let's return into the button controller, and remember that the list that I defined had true, false, and true. Let's just change one of them and see if that actually works. So I have false, false, true. I sh should see a change now. We'll run the app again, and sure enough, I see two red buttons and a green. So it appears that my model is working properly. Next, I'm going to expand my model. I'm going to make a for loop, and let's put 25 buttons on the screen. And in this case, they will all be set to true. So we'll have the same kind of list, but much longer. Now let's return into the view, and we'll adjust that as well. So I'm not going to explicitly say item 0, 1, and 2 in the list. I want to create a for loop here as well. So we'll delete the second and third items that we've displayed earlier. So now we just have model 0 on the screen. So since I'm going to loop through the list, I'm going to use an at for symbol. And let's once again count from 0. And I'm not going to put 25 in here because that could change in the future. Instead, I'm going to use model.count which will be the number 25 in this case, but it is flexible now for the future. So we're going to loop from 0 to 25. Next, I'm going to remove the if statement and put it inside the for loop. Now I want to check to see if the model of item i is set to true for the state. So the same result should appear on the screen. And in the case of our model, I believe everything was set to true. So we should see 25 green buttons. So you can see that I have an error in my application. It says unexpected if after the at symbol. So the explanation for the code is once inside your code, you do not need to prefix if with an at symbol. So it's an unnecessary if statement. Let's go check out the uh, results there. 
So the offending at symbol is right here with if. If I remove it, it'll still work. Now the reason it works is because I'm in this code already. I have not included any HTML code. So the if statement does not need to have the at symbol. So we're up and running, and it looks like I have 25 green buttons on the screen. So they're all set to true, and they're printing properly. So the for loop is working. Next, let's make these things appear in a grid rather than one long line. So I've decided that I want to make each row five buttons long. So I'll use the mod op operator. So I% percent five means find the remainder of this division problem. If it comes out to divide by 5 evenly, then this will be a true statement, and then I will add a break, so it'll be a new line. And now when I display the page, you can see that I have a perfect 5x5 five five grid. Looks nice. Now, in the next step, we have to change these buttons and make their values either true or false. Right now they're all true. I'd like to randomly assign them to be true or false. Let's return back to the button controller and add this randomizing. So the first thing I need to do for random buttons is to get a random number. Let's do a random object here and we'll call it random. So inside of the for loop when we generate a new button I'm going to select a random number from 10, 0 to 10. If it's greater than 5 we'll set the value to true. If the number is less than 5 then it will get a false value. So we should have red and green buttons. And so you can see now when I run the page that I have approximately half red and half green. If I refresh the page, I will get a different list. And so I have a randomly generated list of buttons. I've displayed them in a grid, and now we have a, uh, a final display. What's next now is we're going to make these clickable so we can change the state. But we'll save that for the next video.